So I just shot indoor states this past weekend a couple days ago and parts of it went really well and parts of it did not go so very well. And the majority of the reason why things didn't go so well was because I didn't have a solid of enough shot routine or shot cycle ingrained for use with my bare bow. So I figured it'd be a really good opportunity to make a video about shot cycle and shot routines, why it's important, and share some of the information that I've learned, some of my struggles, and some of my successes while shooting bare bow at my first competition. All right, so like many of you people out there who have been following this channel and following my bare bow journey, uh, you know, I've been talking about shooting indoor states for a few weeks now. About six weeks ago is when I decided to shoot it, or my wife and I actually decided to shoot it. It was her first tournament with a bare bow as well. The beginning of it went really, really well. The practice beforehand was going really, really well. The first half went really well. I only dropped about 13 points the first five ends, and I was pretty happy with it. It felt pretty natural. It was easy no struggles, things just went smoothly, you know, it was pretty much automated. And then I decided to start paying attention too much, aiming too much, trying too hard, doing all sorts of things that you really shouldn't be doing. And you know, all these things I knew, right? And so I recognized about two to three ends after I started struggling, hey, you need a shot routine. <laughs> you need to use the shot cycle. You need to use, you know, the basics basically and focus on the basics because the whole point of a shot routine or a shot cycle is to have something that is consistent and solid and is something that you fall back on when the stress is rising. So when the tournament stress is mounting or the pressure of the tournament or the pressure of being out in the field or whatever it may be, the shot routine, the shot cycle is something you focus on, right? And so a shot cycle can be as something as simple as stance, knock the string, draw, hold, aim, and release, right? It could be very, very simple. It can be a lot more advanced than that, and it can be very detail-oriented as well. My shot routine with my Olympic-style recurve went something along the lines of, well, you know, obviously there was stance, but you set your stance, and then you forget about it for the rest of the end because you're never moving your feet. There was obviously loading the arrow. There was a hook and grip within set position. And then I'd go up into setup, draw, load, anchor, transfer, and aim, expand. And then I'd push to finish, to push to the finish of my shot. I wouldn't push to getting the clicker off or push to getting, you know, to the point of where I could release the string. It was focusing on the shot breaking and me finishing my shot. All right. Now, with Barebow, it's very much the same, very similar. There is still a draw, there's a loading, a load, an anchor, a transfer. There's all that stuff and there's still aiming and, and, and expansion and all of those things still are there. But the main difference that I was struggling to figure out was how and when I'm starting to activate my grip sear to help me mitigate and deal with target panic. Really quick, if you don't know what I'm doing for grip sear, it's not a pressure activated sear that actually goes click when you push with your hand. Uh, I don't have a grip on the bow right now, I'm, it's on another bow, but uh, I'm gonna still illustrate it just fine. What I do is I hook my fingernail on the front edge of the grip, and then I pull my finger in, 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 and then click, and when it drops off the side like that, I cut it loose like a clicker. It's not a draw check, it's not illegal, it's totally illegal to use uh, for bare bow archery, and world archery competitions because they can't ban an action they can only ban an item so it's not really that big of a deal pull 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 and when it clicks that's when i shoot so what i am referencing as far as i didn't have a shot cycle or shot routine i didn't really have a specific sequence and a specific pressure a specific speed or feed rate or anything like that because i just hadn't done it enough i hadn't done it enough especially under pressure to realize that what i was doing was inconsistent so 
things that happen when you get into competitions, you get endorphins and hormones that dump into your system and then your perception changes. So sometimes you'll actually shake more or, or have some sort of physiological response. But I believe that some of what happens and actually goes on is actually just a heightened sense of awareness because of those extra chemicals that are in your system. You see more, you feel more, and you're just more aware. So I argue that sometimes what's going on is not necessarily actually worse, like the shaking or the struggle or whatever it is, it's just you're more aware of it. So what oftentimes helps to remove your mind from the distraction of the extra shaking or the longer timing or whatever that may be is to focus on the basics, to focus on the action that you need to do to get through that clicker or to get the shot to execute or get the shot off. So what I have been really kind of working on now that states are over with is trying to figure out that routine. A main part of it had to do with an inconsistency of my finger coming off of the side of the grip. And why that was inconsistent was because of the tension that was built up in my hand needed to make that happen, something I wasn't used to. So I've been really, really searching for a way that I can be consistent with the hand pressure into the bow and the pressure action against that sear edge to make my fingernail click off, which allows me to shoot the shot. Now the method that I'm using is just a method of dealing with target panic. And uh, it's just one of those things that happens, especially with bare bow, there is no clicker forcing me to hold it in there. There's no psycho trigger. And you know, I'm just doing this to mitigate target panic. And so what I found was I would normally set my fingernail down here in set position because it's my grip. So I must set my fingernail on the grip edge in set position. Normally I set my hand in this type of position when I'm shooting Olympic style recurve, just like this, a nice neutral lax, relaxed position. But when I were to go shoot bare bow, I would start like this down here in set position I would put my fingernail up and on. And now it just has an odd feel. It has an odd tension feel. And I noticed during the competition, stuff happening. And what was happening was I could feel the bow jump inconsistently out of my hand. Sometimes left, sometimes right, sometimes up or down. Even though I was trying to focus my pressure and push my pressure towards where I wanted that arrow, go, arrow to go, using what I like to call tension and direction that's been taught by Coach Lee many, many times. If you haven't seen a video explaining more about the tension and direction, I'll put a link in the description below plus a card at the top there because I find it to be extremely critical and if you don't know what I'm talking about, really check out that video and it'll really help make this all make sense. So, I felt like the bow reaction was changing and because of that, I know that my tension somewhere was changing so I thought it was in my grip. And I kept changing my, not necessarily changing my grip, but paying a lot of attention to it. Lo and behold, it was my finger setting off the grip. And I found this out after the competition and I found a really, really nice way to set my sear consistently. And this is something that I have to integrate into my shot cycle or shot routine. So it becomes second nature with a bare bow and it becomes very comfortable. That's the whole point of a shot cycle or shot routine is to make you feel comfortable so you can fall back on that when you're under pressure. So what I found was set my hook, set my grip like my Olympic style recurve, normal. And then as I lift and as I reach the apex of set up and start to draw my bow back and sometimes, and I haven't figured out exactly when to do this, but it's somewhere between the loading phase and the transfer phase. But I'm going to be doing this and this is what I actually do here. So right in the middle of load, you can see I set my hand, my finger up on the grip edge to do a grip sear action. Why I have found that this is important is because as I set my hand in the grip with Olympic style recurve, it's consistent, it's solid, it feels good. But as I lift to draw back, now I have a change in pressure. It feels great, just like my Olympic style recurve and it's consistent. Then I set my fingernail edge on the sear and keep the rest of my hand relaxed and now it feels exactly like my Olympic style recurve at full draw. And so that'll allow me to really just focus on the sear action instead of the grip pressure action and all the other things that were distracting me towards the end of my round. Now I shot a 524 out of 600 at 18 meters on a 40 centimeter face and I shot a 268 the first half. It felt pretty good and I was relatively happy with a 268. It, it felt good although the back half of it was a little soft. 
Um, but, you know, it's my first one. And I figured, ah, we'll just go for it in the second half. We'll have, you know, a good time. And that, that was the main focus, was just to learn and grow and be able to become more of a barebow shooter. You know, more of a real barebow shooter, right? And the second half, I struggled. You can see I, my scores just really were nowhere near what they were the first half. It wasn't because I was fatigued. Although my eyes were fatiguing and the lighting in there is, was terrible inside the gymnasium, it's just so bright and intense that um, towards the end of it, I couldn't see at all. My contacts were fogging up and there was all sorts of issues. I'm not gonna blame it on the lighting. It was just part of a factor that was, dist again, distracting me from the task at hand and what I should be focusing on, my shot cycle and my shot routine. So all of those things that come to mount during a tournament, whether that be extra loud music playing, because sometimes they didn't turn it down while we were on the line, uh, the audio feed being a little odd and uh, you know just being distracting, lots of distractions, the lights, the music, people watching, all sorts of stuff, right? Distraction happens. Um, but I didn't have a place to refocus to. I didn't have that shot cycle and shot routine to fall back into to pull everything back to square one to allow me to do whatever I needed to do without the distraction, right? That's the whole point of a shot cycle and a shot routine. So I struggled. Scores were not doing really well and I was struggling. I was trying to search for grip pressure and sequencing and all these things and I just really couldn't figure it out until the last end. The last end I was just like finally like, all right, it's no different, just, all right, just take your head out of the sand and uh, you know, let's do this it's really not that difficult so uh that last end i did well it felt good and i'm happy that i finished that way but it took me a long time to get back into the place of where i needed to stop worrying about the hand pressure and stop worrying about pressures built up and just do what i was doing in practice which was pushing towards the target and squeezing until the sear went off and cutting it loose and you know, that was the shot cycle or shot routine that I had been building, building up in practice, but it fell apart when it came to competition, and I couldn't fall back on it because it wasn't consistent enough. I didn't have it ingrained enough. I had no shot routine, and it really just threw me off. Now, I still integrated the other things that you really should have into a shot cycle or shot routine, a preload and a reload, uh, and, you know, the actual action phase. So if you're not familiar with the terms that I'm using, I really would highly suggest looking up Lanny and Troy Bassam's Mental Management Systems. I'll have a link in the description below where you can find their book with Winning in Mind. It's actually Lanny's book, I believe. Troy is the son and has done some spin-off content as well. Really great resource to read their book and learn more about mental management. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, you have a preload, which you pre-envision your shot going well. You actually do the action phase of pulling the bow back and shooting it. And then you have a reflection phase or a, a, a reload phase afterwards. So there's a preload, a action phase, and a reload, okay? And the reload, you after you shoot your arrow, you sit there and you think or feel, how did it go? Analyze the shot and reframe it in a positive manner on how to do it better. So if I collapsed, instead of saying I collapsed on that shot, I would say, I need to finish stronger on the next shot. So then the reload, I would envision a good, strong finish, okay? And then go back into it, load my arrow, preload, envision the shot, action phase, reload. Now that is a shot cycle too, but having a shot cycle or a shot routine or a focal point inside of the actual action phase is extremely, extremely important. Especially during the critical time window of when you have transferred or you have come to full draw and you're ready to shoot and then you're then trying to activate the clicker or do the release or whatever you're trying to do. And that is a very critical moment and you have to have some single focal point to be working with to help you get through that stressful time of when sometimes pressure mounts and sometimes distractions come in so you don't then get distracted. It's a really simple concept but not many people have it really, really ingrained into their shot routine, and I didn't with Barebow, and I struggled. Um, I still had a great time. I loved it, and I'm uh, hungry for more, absolutely. You know, on Sunday, uh, we both, my wife and I, uh, the tournament was on Saturday. On Sunday, we were out there shooting again. 
because it's, it's fun. And I was like, hmm, I'm gonna sit here and try to figure this grip thing out. And I did that, I came up here, set my recurve grip, pulled back, set my sear, pull, pull, pull. And when it clicked, every single time the bow jumped straight and jumped consistently because the pressure that was built up in my hand and in the system of the bow grip was super consistent. And a super little fix, a super simple little fix like that, I think is going to allow me to be a lot less distracted and not be anticipating all sorts of things and really worried about trying to diagnose something that I now have a solution to. And, and I know now that I really need to just buckle down and nail down a shot routine and a shot cycle that I can fall back on time after time after time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.